Next, from the State Fair in Springfield, we talked to Steve Ivanelli, the fire chief of the village of Franklin Park, about how the technology of firefighting has changed over the years. Chief Ivanelli then puts on a demonstration showing the life-saving capabilities of home-installed fire sprinklers. This runs about 20 minutes. Steve Ivanelli, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. We're here at the State Fair and uh, you are doing somewhat of a demonstration on fire sprinklers and we want to be able to learn a little bit more uh, about that. It's, it's interesting as we are standing here with an exhibit behind you of old fire technology and it's amazing to think that just over uh, about a hundred years ago that we used to have firemen arrive with horse-drawn sleds and whatever else. Give us just, before we get into the fire sprinkler issue, just give us a little inkling about how long you've been on the force and how maybe just some of the technology of firefighting has changed over the last number of years. Uh, September, this September makes 34 years I've been in the fire service. Uh, when I came on, we were wearing uh, long coats, three-quarter boots and leather helmets. Uh, we were riding on the rear steps of vehicles, riding outside on vehicles, and uh, we weren't wearing air packs because there wasn't enough air packs for everybody that was on shift. And through the years, things have changed, uh, all for the better, to protect us and to protect uh, the, the people we serve. So now, you know, we, we wear different turnout gear made of different material. We're fully encapsulated. Uh, we wear hoods on our heads. We wear SCBAs, the air packs. We all have them. Uh, the vehicles are totally enclosed. No one rides outside anymore. Everybody wears seat belts. Um, the vehicles have come, you know, just like cars. The, the fire vehicles now have analog brakes, airbags, um, roll protection. So there's been an enormous amount of change in our industry over the last 34 years that I've seen. Buildings, the way buildings are being built. Same thing, we went from, you know, true, uh, uh, wood, true wood construction to now manufactured wood construction. You know, when I got on a two by four, it was a two by four. Now a two by four is an inch and a half by three and a half. So um, a lot of changes in building constructions techniques and the fire surface itself. And and some of those two by fours these days are not wood at all. They're steel built, right? They're they're absolutely right. They're steel. Uh, they're manufactured lumber. They're made of laminates and 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 since they've all been put together, they can all come apart under the heat and stress of fire. So speaking of the technology of buildings, we're all familiar with the fire sprinklers in commercial buildings, but there has been discussion around the country, as well as in Illinois, just of uh, should we have fire sprinklers in residential buildings? And uh, first of all, what are your own thoughts as far as whether or not we should have sprinklers in residential homes? Oh, I think it's, it's, it's a matter of point that we, we must have, not whether or not we should, we must have sprinklers in residential homes. The fabrics that they're using in today's furniture, the materials they're using to build houses now, uh, houses are collapsing literally within three to five minutes of the time that the fire starts. Uh, a, a typical old, again, going back to nominal lumber, a typical two by 10 would take 20, 30 minutes to burn through. Today's TJI laminated manufactured joists is burned through in three to five minutes. So we don't even get a chance to get to the building before the stress of the fire is already starting to take its toll on the building. Um, the buildings are collapsing. They're burning hotter because of the products they're using to glue this stuff together. Um, there's more and more metal being used inside buildings. Metal distorts at 1200 degrees and it starts to expand. So collapse is imminent in a lot of buildings and, and we're seeing more and more firefighters getting killed from building collapse now than we've ever seen before and, and more and more residential fatalities because people don't have the ability or the time to get out of the house when their house catches on fire. I'm told in Illinois the number of people that die per year in fires is in the neighborhood of 120. Do you have any inkling, first of all, to what extent relative to modern building materials do they put out more gases? Do, what kills people? Is it gases? Is it smoke? Is, what kills people is smoke, smoke and heat, okay? And you have everything in a manufactured joist or trust is glued together. And at a certain point, at a certain temperature, they begin to off gas. Those gases um, then will, at a certain point, ignite. And you have flashover occurring at a shorter time frame. So people are dying of smoke inhalation, they're dying from superheated burns, superheated gases that they've inhaled in their lungs, and it's all happening in a matter of minutes. 
it's it's happening faster now than it's ever happened before. Yeah, not to be too graphic, but if someone stuck their head into a hot oven and took a deep breath, it would singe their lungs, and that's in essence what can happen in a fire. You can get ceiling temperatures in a residential house fire of about 1,500 degrees. A self-cleaning oven gets up to about 900. Taking the, the, the demonstration that you just used, or the, the example you just used, it, it'd be imminent. You'd, you'd singe, you wouldn't singe, you'd burn your lungs, and, and that would be the end of it. So one of the uh, methodologies of trying to control the uh, fire and uh, make sure that people live longer or the fire goes out is as we started the discussion about having sprinklers put in the homes. Now one of the aspects would be new construction and that that, that would be put in. As I understand it, from your background, you're, you would argue that it is not all that expensive to put sprinklers into brand new residential homes. On an average, uh, on new construction homes, you're looking at, on an average of anywhere between $1.50 to $2 a square foot to install a sprinkler system inside of a new home. It works off of the residential water supply um, and realistically on a 2,000 square foot home, if you take on the high end $2 a square foot, you're talking $4,000 option or a $4,000 addition dollar cost to the house. And if you amortize that over 30 years, it's pennies on a dollar. Pennies on a dollar that will save your life, the life of your children, possibly the life of your grandchildren if they're in your house. And what about insurance? To your knowledge, would the homeowner have any discount on their insurance? There's definitely a discount on the insurance. It, it varies from carrier to carrier. But there is a discount that all insurance carriers provide if your house is sprinkled. What about older residential homes? Would there, is, is anyone, well first of all, before we go there, as we know, look around the country, are there any states currently, to your knowledge, that are requiring residential sprinklers? There are some states that do it offhand. I don't have the exact number. There are some states that uh, actually do there are some municipalities that actually in Illinois there's municipalities in the northern part of the state that that make it mandatory that new homes because new homes have to be sprinkled so um, there's around 30 states I believe that are make it mandatory now and it, it's it's going to eventually have to happen because not only are, are the residents of these homes dying the firefighters that are going in there to try and fight these fires are also dying so on, uh, I think a lot of people might say uh, $4,000, they might look at putting granite in or any number of uh, updates and they're justifying that cost in their own mind when they spread the cost over 30 years. Is, is there a push to mandate these sprinklers and would that mandate apply to older residential homes? Right now, the, 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 the push right now, the initiative is for new construction and it's for new construction only. Um, what we'd like to see in the future is that when someone does renovations to their home or they put an addition on their home over so many square feet, that that new addition be sprinkler, absolutely. But I think the, the bottom line is the best, most efficient, least expensive way to put it is, is with new construction and, and there's no reason why they shouldn't be doing it right now. Let's talk about, uh, before we get into some other aspect of this, on what about in high rises, and obviously in areas like Chicago, there's a lot of people living in high rises. What would your recommendation there be? Well, in high rises, especially in the city of Chicago, um, there was a, basically, we all follow the life safety codes put out by the NFPA. In 2001, those life safety codes mandated high rises be sprinkled. Um, that has yet to be done in the city of Chicago. And what we're looking for in some of the older legacy buildings is to at least get the sprinkler systems into the common areas, the hallways, the foyers, the entryways, the laundry rooms, the storage rooms, because that is, if the fire gets out of an apartment and it makes its way into the hallway, at least there's a way for the fire to be stopped prior to the fire department getting there. So what we're looking at is, is we're not looking to push each individual unit, but we are looking to have the common areas of these buildings sprinklered, protected for the public. I know we could m make a documentary probably on this. We don't mean to go too long, but let me ask, I don't know if you know the answer to this. You're not an insurance man, but 
What about some would argue that the insurance might actually go up because there would be a threat of the sprinklers going off for whatever reason without a fire and doing water damage? I don't believe that's true. Anybody I've talked to in the insurance business, residential wise, um, we have, uh, they say there's there's a decrease in the rate, you know. Um, sprinklers, what's interesting is everybody has an, an idea of what a sprinkler system is, and unlike what you see in TV and movies, you know, when, when someone shoots a sprinkler system or puts a, you know, a round through a sprinkler system, all 79 heads don't go off, okay? So what we're gonna show you today is that when there's a fire in a room, you have one head for about every 100 square foot, one head will put out a fire. And there's two other heads inside this trailer that's a simulated room, and you'll see that they don't go off. So um, it, it is, it is, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about cost, about what they do, about you know whether they, they're worth putting in. In my, in my mind, they're worth putting in. Um, last year, the Illinois Fire Service Association handed out an award to the uh, Chicago Building Commission for voluntarily sprinkling the Daily Plaza. All the people that go in and out of that building, they finally said, maybe we should do this. So, you know, if you follow that lead, there's a public building where there's people going in and out of it every day, and they went ahead and sprinkled it, and, and they should all be doing that. Well, let's, why don't we take a look at some of the technology, and you could explain to us how it works and to what extent it's effective putting out a fire. Absolutely, we will. Okay, Terry, we're inside of our sprinkler trailer right now, our demo unit, and what you're looking at is a residential sprinkler head that's mounted on a ceiling. These heads can be mounted in two different ways. They can be mounted, that's what's called a pendant, or they can be mounted on a high on a sidewall, which is called a sidewall. And what that is, is that is set, there's a liquid inside that tube that's set to expand at 135 degrees. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna simulate lighting a fire in what would be like someone's bedroom in a garbage can. Perhaps maybe it was from a cigarette butt, maybe it was from a candle that wasn't put out. And you're gonna watch the fire grow. The fire is gonna climb up the wall that's muslin cloth, cotton muslin, 100% cotton. You'll hear a sequence of events. You'll see the fire start, you'll see the smoke, you'll hear the smoke detector start to chirp and then go off. And as the fire rolls up across the ceiling and it reaches 135 degrees, you'll see the head pop and that will immediately darken down the fire and eventually put it out. One head puts out 15 gallons a minute. When we come into a room with the fire hose, you're looking at probably 150 to 200 gallons a minute of water that we, it, that we dispel uh, to, to put the fire out. So obviously, less damage, less water usage, and residential sprinklers are designed to give the residents or the occupants of the home the ability to get out. Once it goes off, it's gonna set off the detectors, it's gonna send a signal to the fire department, and it gives the occupants the time to get out. So we're gonna do the demo now, we're gonna have a volunteer light the fire, and, and you watch, and again, this will take place. Again, the fire will light as it grows, smoke detector goes off, and then the sprinkler head will, goes off, will go off. A fire doubles in size every 30 seconds. So when you think about how this works, it, it, it's pretty simple. This is basically just newspaper in a waste paper basket. Now you can see the smoke from the smoldering fire. Eventually the fire is going to expose itself. Soon the, head, the, the uh, uh, smoke detector will go off. And as soon as the fire rolls up across the ceiling, there you go. In less than 25 seconds. It immediately darkened down the fire and it will eventually extinguish it. Again, one head per every 100 square foot actually one head in a room on the average of about 10 by 10 square feet. So as you can see in less than 30 seconds, smoke detector went off, the uh, sprinkler head activated, one head only activated, and the fire is out. And that's the premise behind a residential sprinkler system. Have you had any experience of these going off uh, in any fires that you've come to, or either commercial or residential? Prematurely going off, or just no, no, uh, absolutely? I've been in, I've been in a lot of fires where, where I come from, Franklin Park. We're the fourth largest industrial community in the state of Illinois. 
a lot of commercial buildings, a lot of sprinkler systems, a lot of fires have been held in check by sprinkler systems till we can get there. Absolutely saved a lot of damage. What is the normal response time of a fire department to a fire? You try and get there in less than four minutes. And in your experience of going back and forth between a residential where there weren't sprinklers and the commercials where there were in roughly the same period of time response time, have you seen over the years a demonstrable difference between places with sprinklers and those with not? Oh, absolutely. If we get a commercial fire that's been spr a sprinkler building, by the time we get there, first of all, the sprinklers have notified us, the system's notified us, sprinklers have gone off. Usually by the time we get there, the fire is either extinguished or it's contained for us to be able to go in and extinguish, finish the job. The sprinkler will do 90% of the work. So and, uh, that, you just mentioned something that's an interesting point. Would home fire or home sprinkler systems also report the fire? Because we might have a fire happen when the family's out of town on vacation. Yes, they will. And, and uh, by the time anyone catches it, who's a neighbor, the, the building right, will be the lost, right? The sprinkler system is tied to an alarm system. So as soon as there's what's called a water flow, basically what they do is they have a water flow switch in the system. As soon as that low flow switch senses movement, it sends a signal to the fire department. Is there typically a monthly cost of maintenance on those sprinkler systems? No. On commercials, they have to do an annual sprinkler test, but that's for commercial systems with, that have that that have these big commercial pumps on it. But for residential, no. What do you say about some builders at all that might say, you know, if your average 60-gallon water tank or whatever, it wouldn't be enough water, and that it would be costly to install another water tank. What I would say to them is, is what's a life worth? What's a human life worth? What you just saw was in 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds, it extinguished a fire. Okay, so again, residential sprinklers, the premise is it allows the occupant to get out of the house. So if you have to put in a 60 gallon water tank, isn't it worth it? Again, what's, you know, you put the price of the life on, on your spouse, your children, your grandchildren. I, to me, there is no price for that. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 